Well, systems thinking is how we appreciate the interconnectedness of situations and how we um, don't just focus on symptoms and reacting to symptoms and problems, but we understand the deeper sources of problems. Um, systems thinking is actually a very natural ability for young children. Um, in the last 20 or 25 years, there's been a lot of work bringing the same tools in books like the Fifth Discipline into primary education, five-year-olds, six-year-olds, seven-year-olds. It's very natural for children. They live in families, they play on playgrounds, they're very aware of the social reality in which they operate. Um, so that social reality is interdependent. And think of a family. A family is an extraordinarily interdependent, complex, evolving system. And um, you don't need, it doesn't matter what words you use, um, so we don't make a big deal about the word system with little kids. We say, well, what are the dynamics in your family? And they immediately understand how mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles are all in this dance, so to speak, and how interconnected they are. Um, systems thinking is only difficult because we go to school. That's it. And, and that innate ability to understand interconnectedness withers, it atrophies, very much like the creative uh, abilities, imagination, tend to atrophy. So I don't think the problem has anything to do with how difficult systems thinking is. The problem is how do we overcome our schooling? Because we're always taught in school every subject is separate, right? So this is mathematics, and oh by the way this is algebra, and this is geometry, and they're all different from each other. And over here is history, and over here is social studies, or economics, or whatever, and they're all separate. So the real problem here is the way our Western education system evolved around fragmented knowledge and expertise. You know, if you think about it, the, the, the practical definition of an expert in modern society is someone who knows a lot about a little. So we used to joke in PhDs, piled higher and deeper. So you just learn more and more and more of this very, very special little subject that's all you know about. So, that's the antithesis of a system's awareness. And so I see the problem as more an artifact of our education system than anything innate. Again, you go over into different areas of more, let's just say, integrative expertise. And again, the arts are usually a good example. It, it doesn't matter if you're producing a play, if you have experts on the different lines or sets or the different elements, it's how they all come together. That's what makes an expert either producer, director, even actors. They have to understand how their part is interacting with others. So if you think about any domain in which we have to be creative, then you can start to see this systems intelligence, or what we often say systems awareness coming into play. In some sense, it's no different for a business. You know, it's not good, it's not enough just to have a great marketing or great products or great whatever, it's how they all come together. So in a sense, in principle, the practice of management is very systemic, in principle. The problem is in practice, we often just focus on the numbers. It's a classic problem. You know, have managers, particularly in big organizations, they're just looking at numbers. So it's a very fragmented perspective. So I think you see these dynamics everywhere, the difference between really seeing holes and just focusing on parts, to paying attention to the interconnectedness rather than just elements by themselves. And, and if you think about it, whether it's from an aesthetic standpoint or a pragmatic standpoint, what matters is how they come together and how it all works together. So in that sense, systems thinking is not difficult. Um, part of the problem comes because uh, the particular tools often are conceptual. So we have all kinds of maps and system archetypes and various tools that have people creating representations of systems. But over the years, we've tended to say, well, there's the systems thinking, those conceptual tools, and the system sensing, how you feel a system is working. One of the most common practices that has become integrated into a lot of big projects now uh, is called uh, sensing journeys or learning journeys. You're trying to understand a complex system, 
a group of people go and they see different parts of the system. They spend time there. They get a feeling and a, a visceral feeling of the different aspects of a complex system. When the, uh, when the Sustainable Food Laboratory, which is a network of large businesses and civil society organizations working together to make sustainable agriculture more and more the mainstream system, one of the most common practices they do is they'll bring a group of people from the business world, from uh, civil justice uh, NGOs or environmental NGOs, and they'll all go together to visit farmers. They'll all go together to visit the food companies. They'll all go together to spend time at retail outlets because they're trying to get a collective feeling for how the larger system is working. So I, I think that it's, a, it's, again, it's basically a challenging field simply because we haven't developed the skills, but it's actually very intuitive once you get beyond um, getting too worried about, uh, can I draw this map well? Those maps, by the way, we've always found are very easy to do when you're in a good workshop, but they're difficult to explain in a book. So people read the book and they see all these funny diagrams and they go, oh, well, I, I don't understand that. But once they have a little bit of practice in doing it, it's not so hard. The system archetypes have been a set of tools that now have been in use since the original fifth discipline. They were originally developed by two consultants with a lot of practical experience working with companies, Jennifer Kemeny and Michael Goodman. And when people practice with them in a workshop, they're very intuitive. Oh, this is pretty obvious. I understand the difference between a quick fix and a fundamental solution. So um, I, th I think partly the difficulty there is an artifact of the medium. If you just read about this, it's very hard if you don't immediately understand it. And most people think it's uh, conceptual and abstract. If you do it, it seems very intuitive. So that has to do a lot with how people uh, get a chance to learn. Uh, one of our big projects today is an interactive field book so that we can take a lot of the tools and put them into web uh, platforms that are much more interactive where there'll be written material, but videos and interactive simulations. That we're just at the beginning of that, but I think we've always known that the workshops are really important for people understanding systems thinking. So we have to find more and more ways to make the experience of those accessible to larger and larger numbers of people.